Well, good evening, everybody. I cannot wait to show you what we're going to be doing tonight. It's crazy good. Crazy good. Um, let's see. Who do we have on? I, whoops, got to turn my sound down. Ah, we've got Bill and Misty and Nancy and Kathy and Diane. We got, there's other people, I can't see who you are, but tonight is going to be fun and exciting. Um, I'm trying to use products that I know a lot of you have already gotten, um, and I want to show you how to use them in a totally different way, sort of totally different way. And so tonight, we are going to... Ask the question, when is a vase not a vase? So if you have an answer to that, let me see you put that in the chat. When is a vase not a vase? Hey, Tammy, I see you on. Any ideas what we might do with a vase to make it not a vase? Hmm. Guess who? Cali girl here. That would probably be Christina. Hey, Christina. We'll be seeing you at ClayCon soon when it has a lid. That is a good answer, but not what we're doing tonight. Um, when it can't hold anything, another good answer. But this will hold something when it's no longer functional for intent. Hmm. Let me think about that one. It's functional but wasn't the intent so is that half right let's see when it has holes in it okay i'm loving these answers we haven't hit upon the correct one yet but great answer you guys so how about this um how many of you that are on so far well, one might give it away that's okay Oh, we're only at 501. Well, I guess I should let some people get on. But let me ask you this. Those of you that are on, I see right now we have lots and lots of new people on, but we also have a lot of people, people on from before. So tell me, how many of you actually have when it can't hold water? <laughs> Great answer. But what we're doing tonight definitely would hold water. Um, how many of you that are on actually have my vase forms when you stretch it out and make it a bowl? <laughs> I love these. Hey, you guys are giving me some great ideas. I love it. Hey, Susan, great ideas, you guys. How many of you that are on have my vase form, one of my vase forms? Somebody said I do, and the I do doesn't have a name except Facebook user, let me, Kathy, Kathy, you have it. Um, so we're going to use the base form tonight. I, I know this is kind of strange looking. Um, when it needs to be bigger. <laughs> well, this can be done with a little one too um, that might fit your kiln. But um, I, ha I have a nylon on this, but my base form, actually, let me take it out. I gotta hold my breath because there's clay dust in this nylon. Okay, we're gonna be using this tonight or this tonight, whichever way, you know, you can use it either way. You can use it like this, you can use it like this. Um, but we're not gonna make a vase with this vase mold tonight. What? It is not going to be a vase. Hey, everybody. Let's see. We got Deb on, Kathleen Gallagher on, Christina, Nancy, Debbie Ford. Um, I think the rest of you I've also said hi to. Lauren, I have not said hi to you. Lisa, Kim, frog sticker, go stick a frog. Go stick a frog. Um, all right. 
What time is it? Oh man, I shouldn't have said that so loud because that made my birds walk. Uh, making a pumpkin. I am here. Penny, I'm going to fall over. Conk. <laughs> oh, see? Got my bird going. Um, we're not making a pumpkin, but I bet we could out of this. All right. So for those of you that have, um, have this form already, we're going to give you a whole new way of dealing with it. I hope you're going to love it. And those of you that are in here from my slab group, as soon as this live is over, we are going to go jump over into the slab to fab group and talk about chickens. Anybody want to talk about chickens? Hold that thought. That's happening in the slab group. It's not a ghost, but that's great. Kathleen, you have these forms. We'll wait till you see what we do with it tonight. And um, I'm going to give you a hint. We build it here. And we, we change it in slab or we decorate it in slab. So tomorrow I'll put a, I'll put a little video out of, of what this baby completely becomes. Um, it's sitting over there on my slab roller staring at me. And I love it. Um, hey, Christy and Rebecca and Darlene. All right. I see you, Melody and Deborah. All right. So it is 5.05. And I barely had enough time to get through all of this for this live. You know, I keep telling myself I'm not going to do like a whole class in a live. And by golly, I do it every time. But that's okay. Because I love you. And I love to give you different things to do with our stuff. So let's get started with this first video. We are going to have some fun with our um, base mold. Now I already have a slab of clay. It's a little over a quarter inch thick, but that's okay. It's gonna be a base. And I do have the base mold. I believe this is the medium, maybe the tall. And I'm gonna take my little knee high stocking and stick my base in it. This one's pretty used up and pretty lots of runs in it but that's okay put that in here yeah it's got lots of runs and you'll see why shortly now i'm going to set this aside and i have a template for my base that very very easy i'm just i didn't even use my banding wheel system i'm just doing this right on my table like i said i've already or maybe i didn't say i have already taken and compressed this clay for time's sake um you always compress your clay so if you're not sure how to compress clay go watch any of my other, um, set that right there. Any of my other starting videos, I always show it today for, for time's sake. I'm not going to. But here is the template that I cut out. So here's my slab of clay for the base. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to set up, pull my um, banding wheel system over, pull my base up here. And we're going to put this clay around there. And I'm going to get that set up and be right back. Haha, ha, guys. I said, I said, let me fix this. I keep saying vase, right? I'm fibbing. It doesn't end up being a vase at all. Um, Lauren, you're asking, what does that stocking do? You're going to find out in... One of these videos that are coming up shortly, um, Kathy, it is a new template um, for that base because um, I know it's difficult to get the clay around there. 
So I was working towards getting a, a template for it, but hold that thought because, because, because you, you may want to, you may want to see what else is with it. Um, Penny Paul, tag your it. I already saw it. I already sent an answer back and it's your turn. Um, okay. So let's, let's get going on the first part of this because I can't remember if this next video or the following one holds the answer to Lauren's question. And, um, you will see coming up. Well, I guess you don't need to see coming up shortly now, Mr. Bill has answered that question for you. So if you look in the comments, you will see the answer to that question. Um, Patty, you finally found this. So Patty, so everybody that's on, Tuesday nights we go live in this group at five o'clock Texas time, that's Central Standard Time. Um, I always put a post in this group the morning of, and I tag everyone. So if you have your notifications on, it should go out and notify you that, hey, at five o'clock, plus I create an event. So you should get notified one way or the other that we're gonna go live at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, Texas time. Then at, that'll be from five to six. And then at 6.15, those of you that are in my founders group, you jump out of this group, jump over into the Slab to Fab group, and we will um, have another little live going on in there specifically for you guys. So, um, so mark down, create group at five, and then um, Slab to Fab group at 6.15. So Lauren, you're going to still see just shortly what what that actually does. Okay, I'm back. I have my little slab of clay. I have my banding wheel system that I'm going to set this right here. And I have my slab of clay right here that I cut to the template size. And I have my base and I slip this nylon around here so that I would be able to pull it out easily. And I'm just going to put this out of my way. Now, I'm going to set this up where I have the thin side down to wrap this clay around. Then when I pull it, it's going to come out real simple. So I'm going to put this, <coughs> and I, I created this template, <coughs> excuse me, to attach on the side. So I'm going to pull this here and just bring this around where it comes to the side, just like this. And this one comes around to the side. And this around. And then this side around. Just like this. And then I'm going to squeeze this in. See what a good fit that is? <laughs> a little off even up here, but that's okay. We're going to even that up in a minute. So what I did was I pushed it around to where it would attach here. And then... I'm going to take my metal rib. First off, I'm just going to kind of come across this with my scoring tool. That kind of just puts everything together. I just kind of scored it like this. And now what I'm going to do is just come with my rib and come over that and smooth that back out. Just like this. Some hot water here.
I'm going to just come from the bottom up to the top in a single, a single swoop of a different kind. This is a swoop of a different kind. We're swooping all the way up just like this. Now I do have some little divots where my fingers went in. So I'm just going to take some of this clay off of here and put in those little divots. And then come right up with this. And that's going to completely make them disappear, just like that. See, the one side is completely disappeared. Now I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to put some of this clay. I'm just smearing it over these, these little divots. And now straight up, straight up. And there, one little bit there right there. Probably would never even show by the time I was done. But I do like to do it from the bottom up. And look at that. You don't see a seam or anything. All right. So there's the beginning. There's the beginning. Now, I do want to take my knife and I do want to hold this. I'm holding my arm bent to my chest so that it'll be even as I come around. Just slowly, I'm not moving my arm. Whoops, I did move my arm. While I come around. and make that even <laughs> across the top. Now it's even. And look at how pretty that looks. One solid base form. And that template made it so, so easy. I probably should have done a template a long time ago. All right. Now from picking it up and showing you guys, I have made some divots in the side. So I'm just gonna lightly go up. I'm holding it at a curve and just lightly going up because that, if I go all the way to the top, that will take those little divots right out and keep this nice and straight. Nice and straight, a couple little divots. And you know, don't worry about it being perfect at the moment because we're gonna probably make more um, divots on here and have to clean it up before, before it's over. As I work on trying to make it perfect. I don't like divots. And I'm the queen of divots, okay. So we have this done, and I'm going to set this aside right here for a moment, and I'm going to go get another piece of clay so that we can pull this out and make the bottom. Be right back. Okay, <clears throat> so um, upside down, it could be candy corn. Yes, it could be candy corn. Um, the templates are not available yet because um, I just created that and in making the project that I made tonight, I see that I need to make some adjustments, a few adjustments on that template. And so I will make those adjustments and work with it a little more and as soon as I have it where it works perfect, um, then I'll put it up there and I'll, I'll let y'all know, I'll put a post out that it's available. Um, 
if you guys want it, but um, it there there are a couple little things that need to be fixed. Like for instance, I made it a little short. That's why I had to push the clay together. It should have been a little extra so you could cut it out a diagonal and go in. Because I wasn't texturing it, that it was okay for the project I was doing tonight. But if you're going to um, put texture on it, you wouldn't want to have to squish it all in and, and uh, swoop it all up. So let me fix that. Um, Melody, you just keep thinking pumpkin, honey. <laughs> and so as soon as the as soon as the template is where it needs to be, I will put it up for y'all. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Lauren, I think this one's the one that has your answer. We're back. I have a little slab of the leftover clay. And I'm going to, I should have put this on the top now. But that's okay. I'm going to set this on here. And I'm going to simply, where's my needle tool? I'm going to come around, and I want to come around about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Now, it does not have to be perfect, and you'll see why in a minute. But I'm going to take my needle tool, and I'm going to come where I can see it. You can see it at the top. And I'm going to just kind of bring this around, oh, about an eighth of an inch or so. out of my way as I come around and that got a little wide not that it's going to make a big difference but I do want to come around a little bit I'm going to cut this off I'm going to use that in a minute And I'm going to cut or take this off. Now, I could take, I could stamp the bottom right now. How's that? All stamped, all done. And I'm going to put this back over. What I'm going to do is score around this outer edge. Just like this. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out of here like that. That's what the, the nylon does, is make that come out super simple. And now I'm going to score the bottom of this. Just like this. Now, I'm just going to take my sponge because it's a little faster. You can see up there what I'm doing. I'm just going to wet this. And I'm going to wet up here. But before I stick this on, okay, I don't have my wooden knife, but I do have the bottom of this. I'm just going to slightly wet it. And I'm going to come in here and hide that seam and I've got my hand on the outside so it won't split and I can go pretty far down am I hiding I can go pretty far down with this flip this over and get the rest of this And that takes care of my seam. And if you look, it didn't even split the outside seam because of the way we did that. So, because I set this on there, I want to score this just quickly again. Touch my sponge to that. And then I'm going to take my hands, my towel, 
take my hands upside down so I can flip this. Sometimes it's easier if you stand up to grab it. So you can grab it like this, bring this right over, and kind of set and wiggle that in place. I didn't set that very good. Just like that, and make sure all of it is covered. Just like that. All right, now here's what I like to do. Let me set this right here for a minute. I like to kind of hang this first off. I'm gonna tap this a little. And then I like to hang it just slightly. Where can I, where can you see that? Slightly over the edge. Except for I need to do it over this edge. And then I'm going to take my metal rib. Having this over the edge, I'm going to come straight up and pull that excess in and up. And then, one, you won't see that seam. And two, it won't come apart because you've added this extra clay. And then don't forget to swoop it on up to get out any little divots, just like this. Now I'm gonna turn some more over here. I'm holding this with my hand. I do, like I said, like it to hang off the edge because that helps me get under to swoop it up. I'm just putting the goobers back on there to swoop that up. And then I can also come straight across the bottom, get any excess, just like this, and come right up. If you push it in, I can come here with this little paddle and push it right back out. Just like that. All right, move it around. If your rib gets sticky, I will just stick it right in my water. Get off any excess clay, kind of dip it in your water. And that will glide it right back up the side. Don't forget to go all the way up. Let's make this a little more. Just like that. And that'll blend that right in. Look at this beautiful vase, not a seam in sight. Now, if you had textured this, then you'd have to use the other. You wouldn't do it this way. You would have to just wrap it around and um, press the seam with your finger or run a texture tool up it. Take off any excess and right up the top. Take your time. Woo! Look at how pretty that is. All right. Again, I really can't tell that I did, but if there's like any squished in, I'm going to take this, dip this into my water, very carefully come in and just kind of push that out. But it really, it didn't need it. I just did it really to show you. 
and there is like a perfect base. Where's my baby? Where's my little baby rib? I'm gonna take my little baby rib and I'm gonna bend it really good and I'm gonna come around this bottom and bring this all in. Just like that and I'm holding it very carefully so I don't get fingerprints all in it and look at that bottom I haven't even sponged it yet. Okay. Now I did feel over here where I was kind of sinking it in where I had my hand. So I'm just going to go very carefully in with my spatula and kind of straighten that right straight back in and there you have so far a perfect base form oh let me pull me back down bring it back okay so i did this project today because i thought a lot more of you had this base form we sell these base forms all the time um, so I thought you had more of you had them. So I wanted to make something different with them. Let me show you. Um, here's, here is small, woe, medium. Oops. There, there's the three sizes, small, medium, and large. And I'm using the medium one in the middle. Now, you could, you could do them this direction, or you could use them that direction. So, whoa, that's heavy. So they're double-ended or double-sided. Um, when I first brought them out, here's a base that I just put the clay on up to the point, up to the point that you've seen so far. And then the top, I just took when my knife and kind of did a, a swoop and added some little buttons and I overlapped my clay and I enhanced the seam. I, I took my um, my shaper tool and, and accented the seam on that. So um, this is one and it was probably, yeah, might have been the medium. I just didn't bring the clay. Might have been the medium. And then here's a little tiny one that I did. And I just swooped it. And then an even tinier one. Just itty bitty. This could be a pencil folder. Whatever. But these are these are some of the things I did with it. And what we're gonna do tonight is is totally different. Um, let me move this out of the way. Ch chipper tool. Okay, I got to go back and see what's going on with the chipper tool because I've I'm, I've missed part of the conversation. Okay, so um, Lauren, your question will be answered in the next. <laughs> video I think so here we go all right I went oh wait this next video will also I think <coughs> excuse me I think it'll show you what we're making all right I went and got another piece of clay because I didn't want to just like splice it all together for this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out longer. 
So I'm going to come around this. And I actually decided I wanted to go up a little more and out. Oh, let me preface that video with, because I, I had forgotten to turn my camera on, but the template that I had made um, was too short. The clay did not go around. So I took that piece of clay and and elongated it and actually made the little thingy taller, which is what I'm saying that I need to um, fix these templates. But that's that's what you're seeing here. All right, I went and got another piece of clay because I didn't want to just like splice it all together for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out longer. So I'm going to come around this and I actually decided I wanted to go up a little more and out and out and now I'm going to come across the bottom and out come across the bottom and out And I'll go put this under the plastic because I'll use that for the smaller base. Amazon, hold on, hold on. Sometimes you just can't help interruptions. Amazon. All right, so here is my base. Here is my spout. Oops, that wasn't bright. I just uh, really squeezed it. Be careful. You should really wait till this is more leather hard. I am not because of timing. I'm gonna take my serrated rib and really get this good. And then I'm gonna swing this around. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna get the bottom thing this somewhat off the edge and get the bottom of this. Remember, I've cut this super long so that it would really fit this time. So I'm gonna bring this up and I'm going to just kind of set this on here and just kind of get a fit. And I'm going to take my knife, see the back here? I'm going to cut this at an angle. Ah! I cut down into my, into my pitcher, so I'm going to have to fix that real quick. Squeeze that in. Be careful. Now I'm going to cut, score this and this. Now I'm going to take this off and wet this.
when I take my little red red and go, go around the inside in here where I actually slipped through, make sure that I've got that splice mark taken care of so it won't crack on me. That was just my own mistake. I slid right down, but I fixed it. I fixed it. And now I'm going to come and wet this. And I see these big goobers right here. You may not see them. I'm just going to wipe those out right now while it's easy and flat to get to. Just like that. Now very carefully, and again, this should be a little more leather hard. I'll put this right up on top of here, like so. Press this down and bring this around on top and put those two pieces, press them together and smear it across, just like that. Just like that. Just like you would a foot. And now I'm going to set this on here and I'm going to push lightly down just so that I know it's connected. And press this down. All right. Back to my um, my rib. Now, I'm going to press this in. See that spout? And I'm going to hold this in place. And up I go. I need a clean rib to do that. Look at that. You can't even see where the seam was. Oops. Now I'm going over that seam in the back that I where I spliced them together. Okay, then what I like to do when I have a seam like that that I'm not really covering, I like to take my serrated rib and just kind of go across it. That kind of melts it together. Doesn't have to be a oops, big area. It just kind of evens it out, blends it together. And I'm going to do that up here where I spliced it together. Like that. And then I take my rib and I'm going to do it with the rounded edge. My rounded edge, and I'm going to come across it whoops, 
You might want to hold your hand on the inside. Again. Presto, change-o, your seam will totally disappear. just like that and you just don't even see the seam see how this is coming together into a picture all right now I'm going to stand up for a minute because I want to get inside here and I want to do this to the inside seam. I want to keep my hand on the outside and cover this inside. I think I need my little red rib for this. Just smoothing down this inside seam. If I had my little throwing stick, I would use that. But they don't see it. Maybe I can use this. But I'm going to use my little finger here. I'm going to wet this. Oh, much better. Get this all smoothed in. <laughs> and I think what I'm going to do is actually use this out here too. Kind of smooth this in. So I'm just going around and blending it a little better with this tool. I hold it as an extension of my finger. And then I'm going to take my red rib, I'm going to wet it, and just come across this, just like this. And that seam has like disappeared. Okay, so our, our little short form or medium-sized form has now become a bigger form. And yes, it is going to be a picture. Now, I'm going to do something tonight I don't usually do. Um, let's see. We did the spout. Um, we have one more video and then... Um, this project will not get finished. I'm going to finish it over in the slab group. So I, and it's finished, but I can't show you the finished thing yet until after the slab group gets to see how we finish it. Then I'm going to put a picture together, <laughs> a picture of the picture, um, put that together, and then I'll put that out there and you'll see what, uh, how we actually 
or how I actually designed it. Um, so what you're seeing is just the skeleton, so to speak, of the picture. So let's go to the um, handle. <laughs> Bringing out the big guns. I'm gonna put a handle on this and I'm gonna use my braided, this, well, that's a good way to almost ruin it. Um, I'm bringing this. Okay. Whoops. I forgot the, the video of doing this spout first. Let me go backwards to that video. And because you just saw how I dropped the my extruding gun and almost not knocked that picture off, those of you that have been with me since the beginning, I did make a picture out of this vase form, um, gosh, three years ago when we first came out with these. And I don't know how many of you remember, it was all done and pretty hard, leather hard. And I dropped it and the bottom of it smushed all in but not a single thing came apart. The seam didn't come apart. The handle didn't come off. It just smushed here. So it, it was all smushed up. So, um, but I think, I'm pretty sure I showed y'all that. Oh gosh, it was like three years ago when I, I did this. All right, so let's do the spout first. All right, I went and got another piece of clay because I didn't want to, okay. We're back. Now we're going to work on this little edge. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to wring this out. And I'm going to kind of moisten this. And I'm holding my hands on the outside and I'm just slowly bringing the sponge up and pressing over and now I'm going to press it over with my finger see how I'm getting a curve to this Wet my fingers. And get until you get a shape you like. Which I kind of like that right there. Now I can wet my whole hand and just kind of. bring this around just take your time I'm bringing it over the top of my finger that's under here look at the curve to that is that not pretty and you can just keep going until you get it the way you want it. Keep your fingers nice and wet though. There. All right, now I'm going to take my rib that's been cut in half and I'm going to come and round this. Now 
Make sure you compress these corners really well. You don't want any cracking in the corners. All right, so I just rounded that all around. See what I've taken off of here? And I'm gonna come around this front just a hair more and even that out. And I'm looking at the front of this to make sure I've got this pretty even. And look at that. Pretty, pretty. Okay. Take my sponge, clean this up. And then I'm going to run it into the curve of my hand and get it even because I had it uneven. Whoops. Worse uneven. There we go. And there we go. And did you see how pretty that curve is? Oops, that's the word I wanted. That curve is so pretty. Um, what a huge difference, right? And you could even you could even swoop it more if you want to. Now I'm going to hit the last video of the handle because we're running out of time here. <laughs> Bringing out the big guns. I'm going to put a handle on this. And I'm going to use my braided, this, well, that's a good way to almost ruin it. Um, I'm bringing this out and I'm going to um, use the middle size die for the handle. If I think the handle's too small, then I'll move up to the bigger one. But I'm going to start with the middle size. So I'm just going to pull the trigger. Yeah, this is probably going to be plenty big enough. Cut that. I have my plastic right here because I'm going to reuse some of this. We reuse this in a second. So I'm just going to set that right there for the moment. It kind of sits on the edge of my trash can. All right. Do we want to braid it? This is going to be a personal preference, but do we want a big handle? That's huge. So this would go here about like so. I'm going to Definitely cut that down. So this would go here like this. That whoops. 
usually use it. I usually work with it a little more rather hard and I wasn't thinking and it just locked. So do we want it like this? That's pretty. Or do we want to braid it? Like this. Now if I'm going to braid it, I call it braiding. It's just really twisting. And I'm going to want this down. So if this, you got to think these things through. If this is going to be attached, then this under here is the bottom. So this is what I would want to slam down so it's flat underneath. Let's bring this back where you can see it. So if I put this here, like this, yeah, I think I like the braid better. So what I'm going to do is put this into a shape that I'll like. You can see where there was some slight air bubbles, and that's okay. We can rub those right out. Okay, so this would be to here. out like that. So what I'm going to do is just let this dry and decide where, where I want it. And we may be doing this in the slab to fab group because I don't think we'll get this done So that's going to go there, and that's going to go there, and it's going to look about like that. Woo! So I'm just... Okay, so that is tonight's project. Didn't get to put the handle on because um, it was too wet. <laughs> As you've seen, it went flop. And it was too wet, so... Um, you will get a picture of this either tonight or in the morning. Um, but I hope you love the project. Those of you that have the vase, I would love to, um, the vase form, I would love to see um, what you come up with. And those of you that are in the slab group, jump on over into the slab group and you're going to see what I did to this picture. Um, and then we'll, we, uh, there's, there's something else I need to do that will run out of time. Uh, or I ran out of time today, so I will do it in the slab group or I'll do it later this evening. But thank you all for being here. Um, I hope you love the project and we'll see you guys back here next week. Bye.